Yes, sir. Show this gentleman the 317. Yes, sir. Come on right this way. Oh, wait a minute. What is the matter with you? What? <laughs> what is that on my head? <laughs> what is that on my head? Come on, now, no, stop, no. What is that on my head? Come on, I'm going to tell you what is that on my head? Well, I was in the mood for something silly this time, so I decided to check out the film Mr. Washington Goes to Town from 1941, as I saw that the film featured Manton Moreland. And I was not disappointed at all. There are no serious themes whatsoever to this film. And instead, it's just a ton of goofy humor and slapstick comedy with a whole bunch of silly characters and ridiculous situations. Honestly, I loved it. I'll summarize some of the nuttiness of the film, then offer some closing thoughts. Well, the film opens up and we have two guys in jail. You've got the character Schenectady, played by Manton Moreland, and his friend Wallingford, played by actor F.E. Miller. The two are talking, and Wallingford is trying to help Schenectady pass the time by building some mental images of eating pork chops and having fresh coffee. And, of course, it doesn't work, and Schenectady just isn't able to conjure up any of these mental images in his head like his friend can. And it's just kind of a funny banter between the two of them. So Wallingford reads in the paper that Schenectady has apparently inherited a hotel from his recently deceased uncle. So Schenectady drifts off to sleep thinking about this. Now note, as we go through this film, this plot is so insanely thin that you just need to watch the film for the laughs, not for any sort of deep analysis, okay? (laughs) So later, at the law firm of Mr. Goldberg, played by Charles Hawkins, we find out Schenectady has inherited the Hotel Ethiopia, but he needs to find some mortgage papers for the place that are apparently missing, and he has two weeks to find these and pay off the mortgage. So we cut over to the hotel, and there's Schenectady working as a bellboy, with his friend Wallingford serving as the manager there. And Schenectady is sent off to walk a dog for one of the guests. See you later. Now, meanwhile, the bad guy of the film, Brutus Blake, played by Masio Bruce Sheffield, he wants to buy the hotel. So he's conspiring to find a way to get to those mortgage papers. And around here, Lady Queenie shows up at the hotel, played by lovely actress Marguerite Witten. And she's there, and of course, Schenectady sees her and gets all friendly with her. And by the way, both she and Manton Moreland were both in the film King of the Zombies back in 41. It's a film that I reviewed on this channel before. Well, next we have Senor Jose Don Juan Romero, Jefferson Stiletto, <laughs> who shows up. He's played by Monty Hawley, and we find out he's like a expert with throwing knives. And when Wallingford can't get Schenectady's attention, well, Stiletto helps out. Front. Front. So Schenectady hurries over, brings the bags up to his room, and Stiletto tries to talk Schenectady into joining his act as a human target, and, yeah, as you can expect, that doesn't go so well. Cut it out. You make me nervous. You stand still. Oh, So Brutus Blake shows up at the hotel to get a room, followed by a guy and a gorilla who show up and get a room, as this film is just getting progressively weirder and sillier. It's almost like watching a ridiculous fever dream, to be honest. Cicero, shake hands with the gentleman. Cicero! And then next, you won't believe it, but the Invisible Man shows up. He gives his card to Wallingford and then vanishes and reappears a bunch of times. And of course, this just leads to more silliness with Schenectady. You know, this is such a hard film to try to give a summary of. <laughs> come on, get away. Come on, now, Mr. Come on, get away. You that night. Ain't no use nothing like that. Come on, where, where did you at? Here I am. Who said that? I did. Well... Come on. 
And if that wasn't weird enough, a headless man appears. Well, he's carrying his head, and he asks where he can go to get a haircut. I want to shave. I'll be back in 10 minutes. Anyhow, it turns out that the gorilla has been going around the rooms taking things, so Wallingford puts on the gorilla suit to go and return things because I don't know. And while dressing up as a gorilla, he overhears Brutus Blake next door talking about the mortgage papers that they need to find. So Wallingford sneaks in dressed as a gorilla to take the papers from them and then heads downstairs right as some more guests are trying to check in for some peace and quiet. And they see the gorilla and yeah, silliness ensues. And wouldn't you know it, the real gorilla shows up, and there's a fight, and Wallingford is knocked out. The real gorilla heads downstairs, and of course, there's mass confusion, a chase, people throwing beauty cream around, and it's just complete nuttiness. And I love it. And the ending is pretty much as ridiculous as you can imagine, but I'll let you see for yourself. I can't spoil this cheesiness by giving away the ending. Mr. Washington Goes to Town was hilarious. It's got the mindless physical humor of Three Stooges with nonstop silliness with characters like the Invisible Man or the Headless Guy that add absolutely nothing to the already thin plot. <laughs> but I think that's what makes this so good. Manton Moreland is just so funny here. He's such a great actor with his crazy expressions and his quick zingers. I've reviewed a number of his films on this channel already. And I always enjoy seeing him even if he's just making a brief appearance, like in the film Dressed to Kill with Lloyd Nolan. It was a review I did recently. Anytime he shows up, it's great. And actor F.E. Miller was excellent as the character Wallingford. Now, both he and Moreland did vaudeville acts together. And you can see from their scenes together, they've really got a good, natural vibe with one another, with Miller more or less playing the straight guy and Moreland doing the silly gags in response. The two were just great together in this film. The condition further states that you can't dispose, dismantle, nor distribute said property on account of the cause at your demise. That's your death. Yes, I know. What you said? I said your death. Uh oh. The said property must go unchanged, unaltered, and unaccounted for to your children, your children's children, your children's children's children, and even their children. In other words, you can't sell the joint. Did you uh, assimilate these facts? Well, there wasn't a whole lot I could find as far as background of the film. It was produced by Dixie National Pictures in Atlanta, which was formed by producer Jed Buell with the help of a Ted Toddy. Again, not a lot of history on that studio that I could find, which leads me to wonder, as I do every time I make a video for YouTube, is, is the film in the public domain? I don't know, but I hope so as I plan to use a bunch of clips from this film. <laughs> and I think it's noteworthy that the film has primarily a black ensemble, and yet nothing in the film that I really noticed was specific about race. It's just very talented actors and comedians making a very funny film built mostly just on sight gags, slapstick, and ridiculous situations, all situated at a hotel where random bizarre guests keep showing up. You know, I really loved it. What can I say? Maybe I'm an old fuddy-duddy, but I just love a clean comedy where you can laugh at the silly dialogue, the absurdity of guests at a crazy hotel, and not have to mire through profanity and toilet humor. Yeah, I'm just old-fashioned, I guess, but this is my type of film. But my three fans probably know that about me by now. And again, this isn't something like Citizen Kane with technical filmmaking and deep analysis required. No, it feels hastily made because... Well, it was. <laughs> they made it in six days at a reported budget of $15,000. But you know what? As I watch more and more films of the past, the more I realize that even low-budget, cheesy films like this can be a lot of fun and just appreciated for what they are. You know, and it's a shame this one is not more well-known. Now, as for the title, Mr. Washington Goes to Town, I have no idea who Mr. Washington was or what the town was for that matter, and that completely puzzling title just 
fits this nonsensical film perfectly. That maybe the title is a play on Mr. Deeds Goes to Town with Gary Cooper, or maybe Mr. Smith Goes to Washington with Jimmy Stewart. Who knows? It doesn't matter. Well, let me wrap this one up. The film is not on Prime that I could see, but there are a few copies online. I have one linked below from the channel Pizza Flicks, one of my favorite YouTube channels for watching old films. And honestly, this is a brief film. It's barely an hour in length, so it's a quick watch if you want to go see something silly that doesn't take a huge time commitment. Mr. Washington Goes to Town was a very funny film from 1941, starring Mantan Morlin and many talented actors. It's low budget, it's very silly, and it's definitely one worth checking out. Confucius say, he who chases bird away will get the bird himself someday. <laughs>